Alright boys and girls, welcome back to the UAM speedrun where I try to max this account in less than 2000 hours. Last video I pretty much didn't do anything other than farm runs and stealing from Martin. And I also managed to get my bottomless bucket from Hespori quite early on, so we made some pretty good gains last video. But in this video the gains are going to be kind of crazy, maybe a little bit insane even. I can't believe how lucky I got with the timing of a very small and random update, but more on that later in the video. First I gotta process all the herbs that I farmed last time. So I started off with Herolanders, and I started off with these because if I did other potions first that I needed to keep, I would have a looting bag in my inventory which uh, would hold my potions, which would result in lower XP per hour here. And the energy pots aren't useful, so I can just drop them. And honestly, the method is kind of straightforward here. Buy out the Lumbi chest chocolate bars and cut them into dust. And that is actually kind of weird how you can do this with a knife. Like you would think slicing up a big chocolate bar with a knife would take quite a while to reduce it to literal dust. I think a pestle mortar would be uh, much quicker for this. But oh well, the XP number go up and the noted potion number go down, so that is good. I started off with level 74 Herblore before the energy potions and all the other potions will be made at the GE on the famous UAM Herblore tile. Thousands upon thousands of EHP have been gained on this tile by the UAMs over the years. And now I'm joining them on my journey to 99 Herblore. And with the GE pots I'm starting with uh, prayer potions because these are the ones I have the most amount of. And I'm doing these first while I don't have a looting bag in my inventory yet. So I can do the 12 by 12 potion method, which is a little bit more potions per hour than the 12 by 11 method. Alright, that's the last of the prayer potions. And after decanting, we now got 4.8k 4 doses. Should be more than enough for 99 Slayer, I think. But I still have some Snapcrafts in the inventory, so next up are fishing potions from the Aventos. And these are actually much better XP per hour compared to super energies when taking the time to gather their secondaries into consideration. So for the future Aventos I'm doing the same. But I don't have enough Snapecrafts for these Aventos. But what I do have is 600 Amylase crystals, so I'm going to make 200 stamina pots with the leftover Avento pots. Just hit 81 Herblore, the level to make a Sarah brews, but I will not make a single Sarah Domain brew on this account because they are inefficient for the speedrun. But yeah, the rest of the potions are just the same, so we are fast forwarding a bit. I made all my super strengths into super divine strength potions with the crystal shards I had from all the Prif Dinas stuff. But I found out that you could actually one tick these uh, after I was done with them, so yeah, that is uh, 15 minutes uh, wasted. But now I got over 800 divine super strengths, which uh, is. I think like 270 hours of super strength uptime, so that should be more than enough for Slayer, I hope at least. Now if you are a PVMer, or specifically a Ironman PVMer, you might want to look away for a little bit, because I'm going to commit terrible sins to these unfinished Toadflex potions. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna make agility potions for all of them, because actually getting burst test on a UAM is kind of terrible. You have to kill the giant mole and then trade in the parts. But to do efficient giant mole, I would need to have the heart diary from the Felador completed, which requires full prospector, which is kind of slow to get. And on top of that, I would need a good weapon to actually kill the giant mole, because with a whip, it is just simply not worth it. The kills per hour is too low. So I would either need to get a bova, which is like probably taking a very long time to get a Osmanthan Sveng, which will be even slower to get. Or I would have to get a Zemorak Hasta to like get decent kills per hour, but even then the kills per hour is just probably not worth my time going dry for a spear compared to doing agility potions. Coming up on the end of the small Herblock grind, just a couple 100 edgy potions left to make and then it's on to the stamina pots. But uh, these agility pots are even better than I anticipated. I thought you could only get around 600 pots made per hour, 
But after I switched to a 1k plus population world, I noticed that the swamp toads would spawn much faster, which made hopping worlds not needed anymore. And after some practice, I am now getting over 70k Herbor XP per hour, which is more than 875 potions per hour. Which is almost 50% more than I expected at first. So it is safe to say that I'll turn all my Toad Flags into Agility Potions, if you like it or not. And there is the final level of the Herbor grind for now. Level 84. I was originally going for level 83 to boost to 87 for the Ornate Pool, but... Apparently I got 84 from it, so that is uh, free XP. And now just the uh, Stamina's. These are kind of the same as making super energies. You go to the swamp with a half your inventory of Avatopods, make the potions in the swamp and go back with, uh, and go back to the GE with a full inventory of the fungus. One tick the Stamina's and note them, then note more potions, make more super energies, Do the same thing with the Stamina's again, and then go back to the Swamp with some more unnoted Avento Potions. Alright, that's the Stamina's done as well. We have 600 doses, which uh, will come in handy for some artifacts that I'm going to do in a bit. Got to buy a Eddie Pick in Perif. Ooh, Crystal Imp. Get your ass over here, man. Alright, some Baby Dragon Bones. You know what? I could actually bury those on the way while I'll run to the quarry. Yeah, this is uh, some unintentional but kind of epic zero time prayer XP. <laughs> I like it. I explained this in the last video too, but crafting, mining and thieving are like one skill if you do it efficiently. But thieving is also tied to finishing herblore with master farmers after Slayer. So I can't really finish it yet. But at the same time I want to do as much artifacts as possible with multi-skilling. So I get more crafting XP that way. So I would have to do less charter ship glass blowing for it. But yeah, it is impossible to actually say where the optimum lies here. But I'm going to mine some sand now. I calculated that I need around 8.4k buckets of sand to go with my 1.4k giant seaweed. So I can blow the glass while doing artifacts. Actually, change of fucking plans. I forgot I could still do gem mining until almost 99 mining and then cut the gems at artifacts like I did earlier. That is better than doing glass still. I was kind of under the impression that once I hit level 87 crafting and I could glass blow the empty light orbs that it would be better. But that wasn't the case so I uh, actually mined a little bit too much sand. I already mined 6k here. But I think only 5k is needed for now, uh, after the gem mining. So yeah, we are uh, back at the gem rocks. <laughs> I mean, you guys know the drill, fill the gem bag, run artifacts and repeat. There is a 98 mining, the last level for now, because I'm playing a 98 locked ultimate Ironman speedrun account, because you can always finish off a skill later with slightly more benefits. And in this case, I can leave some XP to get back here during Slayer to craft some Slaughter Bracelets. So leaving about 160k XP, that should be enough for like 250-270 Slaughter Bracelets. And of course I can't make those all in one go and store them somewhere. But I'll save that tedious process for when I actually get around to doing Slayer. Now it's time to blow some glass. Buying some Astral Runes. I also remembered that you could sell back your items to Prospector Percy here. And I have a gem bag, so that is worth 80 golden nuggets. And with those 80 nuggets I can buy two bag of gems, which is more crafting XP. So selling the gem bag off, I'm buying two of those. And I can cut these as well at artifacts, so the glass will have to wait a little bit longer still. Because I originally planned to do all of my remaining thieving XP with Artoglass, I farmed way too much seaweed and mined a bit too much sand. So what I'm doing now, to still get the best value out of the sand and the seaweed, I bring 3 giant seaweeds and 18 buckets of sand. I can just barely fit this into my inventory, I even have to drop the GP that you get from artifacts for it, 
But normally UEMs only do 2 seaweed and 12 buckets and but that can result in not having enough glass for some of the houses that are like a little bit further away. You would run out on the way back sometimes. So with doing 3 and 18, I always have a full inventory and sometimes I can even pick up some glass on the way back from the southwestern house for even more crafting XP per lap. But sometimes I do have to wait a little next to Captain Kellett after getting like the southeast house or the northern house until my glass is done, but I think it's still very much worth it. And then at the bank I just keep the coins and two light orbs in my inventory and then unnote the buckets and then drop the coins and the two light orbs to unnote the sand so I don't waste any buckets of sand. And I don't have to do any like take off switches with my armor. Alright, I'm pretty much out of sand now but I'm not quite level 98 thieving yet. But then someone in the chat reminded me that I was still wearing the celestial ring from the mining I did. And with mining already finished, I was going to get rid of this item anyway. But it turns out that you could actually sell this ring back to the dwarf for 1600 stardust, which buys me another 5 bags of gems. And I'm pretty sure this should get me to level 98 thieving. And yup, on my last full inventory of gems, I get level 98 thieving and 2000 total and i'm gonna leave 98 to 99 for master farmers to finish off my herblore if needed i just don't want to be short on herblore at the end and then have to do some weird stuff and uh, no master farmers because i'm already 99 thieving and the 12 sapphires in my inventory extra are even like better because now i can zero time craft on my way to hespori because it is once again a death bank time but before I'm brought to my knees by the angry plants, we gotta talk about some nerd stuff. EHP. EHP stands for Efficient Hours Played and is a measurement to track progress towards maxing or 200 mil all. And the EHP for mains is different compared to UAM EHP for obvious reasons. But sometimes EHP gets updated to reflect the new metas or just adjusting some outdated rates. And just now the UEM EHP has been changed, so I have lost some precious EHP. But let's go over some of the changes real quick. On the left I have the old rates and on the right I have the new EHP rates. Nothing super excited for the combat skills, prayer went up a little bit, the method changed slightly. Now it assumes you bring like 200 noted bones instead of death piling every inventory. But I should get prayer done anyway with Slayer, hopefully. Fletching went up also, especially for post-99. And now a big one, Barblore is also supposed to be done pre-99 now. And I was going to do this anyway, but instead of having a massive over EHP, I will get 1 to 1 now for this. It's a good change though. Herblore went down slightly pre-99, first it was just one rate for post and pre-99, so that is also nice. Another big change is just much higher slayer rates due to just outdated numbers. It will definitely be a little bit harder now to maintain 1 to 1 for the skill, but it should still be good. Because you know, I got some tricks up my sleeve. And farming went down quite a bit actually, pre-99, which is kind of beast. Because farming will most likely be the skill that I'm gonna struggle with the most. Runecrafts got updated to small teams, but it's a lot more viable right now due to the small teams discord that I made. And lastly, construction. It's finally no longer boring 3 tick teaks in Priv. And due to the log basket, 1.5 tick teak mythical cape on Fossil Island is now the best way to train construction. And that is what we are going to do next. The 99 construction grind begins now. And because of these changes, the total HP needed for 200 mil all on a Ultimate Iron Man went down 1700 hours and it is now at 24,195 hours for 200 mil all. And for maxing, the total EHP needed uh, for UAM went down from 2066 to 1974, so almost 100 hours less. And now that the 1 to 1 EHP rate is already under 2000 hours to max, I will move my goal of hours to max from under 2000 hours to less than 1920 hours. And 1920 it's exactly 80 days of playtime, so I'm now shooting for a sub 80 day max cape on UAM. And also fun fact, this will be faster than the fastest main to max in 2020 according by this tweet by a JMod. 
Which would be cool if you got an updated one of these to see what the lowest UEM time currently is, but oh well. Move on to the construction. This is honestly such a great method. 1.5 tick teaks is my favorite skilling method in the game to begin with, and pairing it with good old build and remove construction as a break makes this really easy to do long term. I personally think that the build and remove construction is very enjoyable actually. Many people do not like it, but it has a very nice rhythm to it, and I had a blast doing this to 200 mil on my main account. So I am kind of like in skilling heaven right now. And here's the first level, level 80 woodcut. And I'm dropping quite a bit of logs now, since my woodcutting XP is behind my construction XP, and you do get more construction XP per log or per plank to begin with, and you get woodcutting XP. You get 87 woodcutting XP for a log, and you get 123.3 for using them for the mythical cape racks. Already 85 woodcutting. And I've been going quite hard on the woodcutting, because there has been a new discovery in terms of construction metas for Ultimate Iron Man. Which made it so that woodcutting might not be tied anymore to construction. So what I'm going to do right now is to match my construction XP to my current crafting XP. Which is 4.75 mil XP, which is level 88. And this also happens to be the level needed to make the master stash units, so I can store several items in there instead of keeping them on me or in my death bank. So level 88 construction is our next stop. I do still want to give some more love to this method though, before I need to move on. A recent update made it also possible that when you make planks at a sawmill, they instantly go in your plank sack. So you can just turn all your logs into planks super quickly if you are quick with pressing the correct buttons when emptying the log basket. Because there is still not a right click empty option on this thing. But it is still very satisfying to like one tick all these actions. And it's also possible to teleport straight into building mode in your POH. I wasn't aware of this at first. But if you tick the setting to on where it says default building mode. Kind of makes sense but I just missed this option. You will just teleport into the building mode and can start building right away. Which increases the XP an hour by a little bit. And that is 85 construction. 3 more for 88. Very good. Good morning. You guys are just in time to see a level 88 coming in. But level 88 doesn't mean that I'm done with construction for now. I still need 400k more xp to match my crafting xp so i'll be back in a couple of hours with making the stash units all right just got done with the last mythical capes and i left the cape in my poh as i would need that for a teleport to the mid guild for slayer and now my construction xp is just barely behind crafting because making the stash units actually gives a decent amount of xp so i will hopefully be pretty much the same xp after that first need to pick up some gold leaves from Caldergrim. So I can actually make the master stash units. Cut some mahogany logs to make some planks. The first stash unit that I built is the master stash in Draenor Village. This holds a whip, a legendscape and spine chaps. This one might come in handy for Slayer so I can store a whip here. Also making this one in the catacombs for an arc light. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use this because getting the other item, the amulet of the damned, is kind of annoying. So this is probably just going to be a stash for post max. I chopped some mushrooms from the Suliceps and building the fairing finally so I don't have to use my silly little self graveyard teleport. Another nice one is the one in the Enchanted Valley. This holds a dragon axe, so I can just leave my axe here for whenever I would need it again. Which is probably for finishing off 99 woodcuts later. And now the best stash units for Ultimate Iron Man. This one in the Warrior's Guild stores Slayer Helm and the Dragon Defender alongside the Dragon Battle Axe. So now you have two untradeable items, the Slayer Helm and the Dragon Defender that are just like in here and don't have to like keep them on you or have them in your death bank so a very nice one and then lastly this elite stash at uh, legends guild which holds a amulet of glory alongside the legendscape and a dragon battle axe but it's mainly the amulet of glory that is useful to have here 
since when I am doing Slayer, I want to make slaughter bracelets and to mine the gems, you need a charge amulet of glory. So to quickly get one, I will just pull it from this stash unit and then store it back again. Well, I think it's time I fill you guys in on the secret new construction meta. At the start of last month, Zaya favors were removed. Well, there's plenty to say about Zaya favors being removed. But alongside removing them, they also made a couple changes to some of the favor activities. Including the fishing cranes in Port Piscarillias. As current favor has been removed, the amount of crafting experience has been increased from 3 times the player's level to 4 times. A crafting requirement of 30 construction has been added, giving construction experience equal to 4 times the player's level. And repairing fishing cranes has been made slightly faster. At first you might think, oh, seems fine, gives it a little bit more use, and maybe nice for like, say, a locked account or something. But then you have the nerds like Kella and myself that come up with methods that use alts and turn it into a silly idea for a silly speedrun. So by using two alt accounts that also help repair the crane, because the way repairing the crane works is that you have a 30% chance when you have level 99 crafting to repair it. But if only one account succeeds the role for repairing the crane, all the accounts that are currently interacting with the crane will get an XP drop. So essentially you can just boost your success rate if you have multiple accounts repairing the crane. So I'm just getting boosted by my alts, very in the spirit of the game mode. And then you just repair the two cranes and hop to the next world. And it gets even better, where you run out of planks, you teleport to Burke the Rot and run over to Morton. And there you can restock on regular planks from the builder shop. But there's only a stock of 10, but what you can do with another alt account, because this shop is not instanced between Ultimate Iron Man or just any account. You can sell back 10 planks so you don't overstock the shop with your alt account, which can just be a main. So I'm just standing here with noted planks on my alt, selling back 10 at a time and then buying 10 on my UAM, filling the plank sack, which means I don't have to hop worlds for this, which makes it a lot faster. And then you just teleport back to Port Pescarillius and repeat. About to hit a level 90 crafting and construction, because you do train two skills at the same time, and the XP rates are actually kind of ridiculous. Normal HP for crafting is only like 100k an hour and you already get 100k an hour at level 90 here and on top of that you get the construction XP. <laughs> and no 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 no, it gets even better. The planks in the shop cost 1 GP each and the nails cost 2 GP each. So in total you spend like 20 coins to repair a crane and you get like a 700 XP drop for it. So in total, the GP per XP for this is like 0.06. And in comparison to regular construction, that is about 4 GP per XP. So doing this to 99, I'm probably going to save like 30 to 35 mil GP. Yeah. However, there is a downside to this method. Because you hop so many worlds, you will hit the world hop limit after like 4 hours. But then it is just kind of waiting until you get your world hops back. Which can be quite annoying, but yeah, in terms of the speedrun, it is still like a very, very solid method. Because when I'm hopping worlds as well, my playtime doesn't go up. So for the first hour that I tracked this, I played for one hour, but I kept track of my in-game time with the plugin. But my in-game time only went up by like 47 minutes. So every hour I pretty much gained like 1.2 HP like already because of like not being logged in and on top of that this method is like insanely over EHP <laughs> compared to the existing metas. So for the first proper day that I did this I gained over 15 EHP when I was playing for like 10 hours but only in-game time was maybe like 7 or 8 hours so yeah it is quite ridiculous. Ho <laughs> Dude, I generally feel like I'm cheating or something. Dude, look at this XP rate. 118k an hour in both skills? I don't know, man. This just feels wrong, almost. It, it reminds me of Driftnet for the first time. 
when I was the one of the first players to actually do Driftnet properly uh, back in 2020. And I was getting like one and a half HP per hour almost compared to the other existing metas. It, it just feels so strong. And there we have the 1000 hours on the tracker. So we are technically halfway towards the goal, but I think we're a little bit ahead in terms of actual progress towards the maxcape. But yeah, 1k hours. Unexpected 92 magic, but uh, 92 magic. Now we have uh, enough for the offering spell for the bones, the sinister offering. Alright, more cranes. And then a little bit later, Jagex decided to update the fishing cranes to make it more reliable to get XP awarded. Because it was a little bit buggy sometimes that you would miss out on the XP drops, but that wouldn't really happen if you timed it correctly. And what you also could do before this update was to just spam click the next crane, and then if an alt repaired it, you would get the XP drop as well. But after this update, if you repair the crane like on your Iron Man, you would have to wait until the XP drop is almost off the screen because you are still on the cooldown of repairing the first crane before you can interact with the second one. So if you would be too quick, you wouldn't interact with it and the alt would steal the XP if he was the one to repair it. So now you have to like time it a little bit better. It's a bit more balanced, but I don't know. The previous one was more fast paced. There we go, 97 craft. 97 construction as well. Two more to go till I'm free. I can now build marble spirals. Sure. It's already coming to an end, the Crane Mania, about to hit 99 crafting here. Alright, 99 crafting coming in, let's fucking go. Alright, let's keep going. Yay! Let's fucking go man, 99 construction as well. Alright, let's, uh, let's buy the cape I guess. Hey, nice best in slot cape unlocked for until the max cape. So that is a pretty poke. I'm now gonna log out because I don't want to waste more time. Well, actually, let's do one teleport. Hey, so yeah, so it was the end of the episode, but I do have some numbers for you guys still. In total, I repaired 21,759 cranes, approximately. And to repair all of those cranes, I used up around 150,000 blanks and around 500,000 bronze nails. Costing me a total of like 50 mil GP, so it was actually not very cheap for my main bank. But my UAM only had to pay around 500k GP to get 99 construction and crafting from level 88. 
And then for the end stats, well, we pretty much only worked on Herblore from level 75 to level 84, and then just construction and crafting pretty much. And the playtime when we started the video was at 912 hours and 919 EHP. But of course, Herblore is stored XP, so not very accurate to see how much time we actually save with the cranes. But if you look at the playtime when we started Cranes, it was at 977 hours in-game and 1026 EHP. And at the end of the episode and at the end of Cranes, we had a playtime of 1038 hours and EHP of 1142. So in total I gained over 55 EHP back from just doing Cranes. And on top of that I also saved over 30 mil GP compared to doing the mythical capes method. So yeah, safe to say, the cranes has been a great success. I hope it doesn't get nerfed and I hope you guys can also enjoy some crane making. But um, yeah, other than that, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like. Yeah, take care.